Welcome back everyone. In this example, we are asked to evaluate the double integral over the region D of the function or surface Z equals X times Y. And so in this example, our region D is gonna be the triangular region bounded by the three points, 0, 1, 0, 4, and 3, 4. And so in order to express our double integral as an iterated integral, we're first gonna to need to draw a sketch of our region D. And so let's go ahead and plot these three points and see what this triangular region is gonna look like. So we have the point zero one, the point zero four, and then the point three four. And so these three points do in fact create a triangle if we connect them. And the space inside this triangle is the region D that we're going to integrate our function X times Y over. And so what's interesting about this example and this region D is that we can easily view this region D as either a type one or a type two region. And what that means is that we can actually express this double integral using either order of integration, first with respect to X and then Y, or first with respect to Y and then with respect to X. So let's go ahead and do this example both ways, treating it first as a type one region, and then we'll run through it again as a type two region and see that we get the same answer either way. So if we first wanna run through this example by treating our region D as a type one region, then we have to describe our region D as being bounded by a curve on top and a curve on bottom between some interval of X values. Well, our curve on top we can see is Y equals four, and our curve on bottom is gonna be that line that goes through the points zero, one, and three comma four. Well, that line will have to have a y-intercept of one, and then a slope of, well, we go over three and up three, so a slope of one. So our upper curve is gonna be y equals four, our lower curve is one plus x, and that's gonna work for the interval of x values between zero and three. So if we think of D as a type one region, then we can express our double integral as the integral from one plus X to four of the function X times Y. We're first integrating with respect to Y, and then we'll integrate with respect to X, and the interval of X values we have to integrate over will be from zero to three. All right, so let's go ahead and evaluate this double integral really quickly. So the first thing we have to do is find our antiderivative with respect to y, and that'll look like x times y squared over two. We can't forget about that outermost integral though. So we'll take our antiderivative, evaluate it at four and one plus x, and then take the difference. We just integrated with respect to y, so these limits of integration are gonna be y values so in order to evaluate this antiderivative, we have to replace y with four and the quantity one plus x. So if we plug in y equals four, we'll get four squared or 16, divide 16 by two and we get eight. So that first term will look like eight times x. We have to subtract away from this, our antiderivative evaluated at this lower limit of integration, one plus x. And so we'll have to subtract away x times the quantity one plus x all squared, can't forget that we divide it by two. And now we have an integral just with respect to x. But we're not quite ready to integrate this yet. I think we need to expand that second term and then combine like terms before we attempt integration. So we're still looking at the integral from zero to three. So we're still gonna be looking at the integral with respect to x that goes from zero to three. Our eight x term is fine, but if we wanna start expanding this, well, if we expand one plus x squared, we're gonna get one plus two X plus X squared. We have to multiply all those terms by X or negative X and then divide by two. So it'll end up looking like a negative X over two. That's distributing the X over two to the one or the negative X over two to the one. Then we have to do negative X over two times two X. That'll give us a negative X squared. And then a negative X over two times X squared will give us a negative X cubed over two. So now we're ready to simplify this by combining like terms. 8x minus x over two is gonna be seven and a half x or 15x over two. Then we have a, a negative x squared and a negative x cubed over two to finish it off. So we've finished evaluating that innermost integral with respect to y and what we're left with is an integral with respect to only x. 
So now this one's gonna be pretty straightforward to integrate. What's the antiderivative of 15x over two? It'll be 15x squared over four. The antiderivative of negative x squared will be negative x cubed over three. And the antiderivative of negative x cubed over two will be negative x to the fourth over eight. All right, so we're almost done with this first time through our example. We just have to evaluate this antiderivative at x equals three and then x equals zero and split the difference. The lower limit of integration zeroes everything out. So really just gonna get our answer by evaluating this antiderivative at x equals three. And the value we get out of that after evaluating our antiderivative is gonna be 117 over eight. So remember, we said that we're gonna do this example two times over. The first time through, treating our region D as a type one region bounded above and below by functions of x, we found the double integral to evaluate to 117 over eight. Now let's go ahead and run through this example again, but treating it as a type two region. All right, so we're gonna evaluate the same double integral a second time through, but now treating it as a type two region. And so if we wanna treat this as a type two region, we have to visualize our region D in a different way. Instead of thinking of binding our region D by a curve on top and a curve on bottom, we have to bind our region D by a curve on the right and a curve on the left. And we have to write these right and leftmost curves, not as Y as functions of X, but X as functions of Y. And so our leftmost curve will actually be our Y axis right here, which is given by X equals zero. And our rightmost curve is still given by Y equals one plus X, but we'll have to express this curve not as Y as a function of X, but x as a function of y, which just means we have to solve this equation for x instead of y, which can be done easily here by subtracting one from each side. So now we are ready to set up our double integral for this type two region. So we're still gonna be integrating the function x times y. For a type two region, we first integrate with respect to x, and then we finish it off by integrating with respect to y. So for the innermost integral, the one with respect to x, the lower and upper limits of integration are gonna be our left and right binding curves. So our upper limit of integration is our right binding curve, which is given by x equals y minus one. And our lower limit of integration is our leftmost curve or our left bounding curve, which is given by x equals zero. And so for which interval of y values are we looking at the space between these two curves? It's the interval of y values between one and four. Okay, so now we have our double integral set up, and if we want to evaluate it, we have to remember we work from the inside out. So first we have to integrate with respect to x and then evaluate our antiderivative at the inner integrals limits of integration. All right, so the antiderivative with respect to x is gonna look kind of similar to what we saw last time, but now it'll be x squared times y over two. So now that we found our antiderivative, we have to evaluate it at the innermost integrals, upper limit of integration of y minus one, and then subtract away from that our antiderivative evaluated at this lower limit of integration of x equals zero. All right, so plugging in our upper limit of integration, remember this is an x value that we're plugging in, we're gonna get y minus one squared times y over two instead of x squared times y over two. Then we have to subtract away from this, our antiderivative evaluated at this lower limit of integration, which is the x value of zero, but zero squared times y over two is just gonna give us zero. All right, so really now, before we integrate with respect to y and finish this problem off, we just have to expand and simplify that first term. So y minus one squared will be y squared minus two y plus one, we have to multiply all that by y and then divide by two. So we're gonna get the integral from one to four of y cubed over two minus y squared plus y over two. And now this is another relatively straightforward integral to evaluate just using the power rule. So the antiderivative of y cubed over two is gonna look like y to the fourth over eight. We subtract away from that the antiderivative of y squared, which will be y cubed over three, then add to that the antiderivative of y over two, which will be y squared over four. We have to plug in y equals four into our antiderivative, evaluate our antiderivative, and then subtract away from that 
our same antiderivative evaluated at y equals 1. And we can do all that inside of our calculators if we wish to. No matter how we go about evaluating that, we should end up with a value of 117 over 8, which is exactly what we got the first time around when we treated our region as a type 1 region. And so we've also shown by running through this example in both ways, as a type 1 and a type 2 region, is that these two double integrals with the different orders of integration are actually equivalent. And what an example like this also helps us see after we've evaluated both of these double integrals is how much more complicated it is to change the order of integration when we're working over a non-rectangular region, right? When we're working over a rectangular region, we can just switch the order of integration without worrying about the limits of integration. But what we see in this example is for these more general regions that are not rectangular, if we want to switch the order of integration, it is not so straightforward. So if we do want to switch the order of integration where we're only given the original double integral, like maybe this type 2 integral here, what we have to do is use those limits of integration for the integral to sketch our region, and then we can reshape our region instead of thinking of it as a curve on the right and a curve on the left. After sketching it, we'll be able to review it as a curve on top and a curve on bottom. So the picture is really going to be necessary whenever we try or want to switch the order of integration.